the first thing that we'll take a look at here is an antibody screen. So this is initially run on the patient just to see if they have any, uh, you could say, non-ABO uh, antibodies uh, present. Um, so just looking at patient A here, uh, we can see that in this panel screen we have two vials or two sets of uh, uh, pooled cells. And on the right, we can see here that uh, the first cell is negative, 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 and the check cells have checked out. And the bottom one is actually positive, and it's positive at the AHG phase, right? We have the initial spin, 37 degree, and the anti-human anti globulin phases. Uh, those are the three that we're spinning the tubes to check for agglutination. So if a patient has a positive screen, as this patient does, then more than likely a patient or a uh, antibody identification panel is going to be done. And, we, and as I mentioned here, the vi the uh, the screen only has two vials. Now, if we take a look at our identification panel, we can see that we have on the left, we have our vials, we have one through 10, and then we have TC, which is technical cells, which we're just gonna basically treat as the 11th uh, vial. So, um, Whenever I do a, a, an, an antigram, which I guess I haven't mentioned yet, that uh, this particular piece of paper in front of me with this uh, antigen profile is also called an antigram. And whenever I have completed all the testing, and we can see that this is completed, and we did tube testing on this, on the right-hand side we have our initial spin, 37HG, and then check cells. And you can see that this has all been completed with zeros, which are negative reactions, and then, of course, graded positive reactions. So usually what I do when I'm uh, trying to uh, work through one of these things after I've done all the testing is I just have a general look over the whole thing and just look at kind of some key features. So the first thing I'm going to look at is down here we have the patient cells. So this is what is basically also known as the auto control. So that is where we are combining patient red blood cells and patient plasma and just making sure that there's no auto agglutination going on. And in this particular patient, we have 0, 0, 0, which means negative across the board or all, for all three s phases there. So we feel pretty confident that we don't have any interference, any false positives due to any, uh, any kind of autoantibody. All right, now if I look here on the, on the right-hand side, I can see that I have no reactions at initial spin, no reactions at 37, and then I have a 3 plus and another 3 plus at the AHG phase. So this gives me some, you know, some information that, uh, you know, if we're just looking at a single antibody, it seems to be more of an IgG antibody because we know that IgM antibodies tend to react at, at uh, initial spin and IgG tend to react at 37 degrees or at the AHG phase. And that seems to be what's going on here with this particular patient's uh, plasma. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle here uh, the positive cells. So this vial of cells, that's number two, had a positive reaction. And then number seven also had a positive reaction. So we just have two of them. So hopefully we're just dealing with a single uh, aloe antibody here. Um, if there were, you know, more reactions going on, it would complicate things. But right now, um, it's looking like it probably is going to be fairly straightforward. Okay, so next step is the ruling out step. So when we do this, you know, you have all these boxes and all these pluses and minuses. I always like to use a piece of paper or a ruler or something to keep me on task, to keep me on the right line, right? because it's very easy to get mixed up with these things. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the negative cells or the negative vials. Vial 1 is completely negative, and we're going to go ahead and cross off the positive antigens. Now, when it comes to how you cross off the antigens, there are different uh, attitudes and methodologies and procedures for how to do this. So the way that I am doing it is the way that I teach my students. It is not the only way. Um, so if you are a student of laboratory science 
and are in blood bank, you follow what your instructor or what your clinical site, uh, their standard operating procedure, you follow whatever they, the guidelines that they use in their facility. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here, uh, like I said, we have negatives over here. I'm going to go and cross out the positives. Now, if you're already doing antigrams and antibody identification, you probably have heard of dosage. So what dosage is, it refers to uh, the genetic expression of an antigen. Either an, an antigen is heterozygous or homozygous. So, for example, if we look in the RH system, we have D. There's only one D. So that's a homozygous, we could say a homozygous expression. And if we look at big C and little c, well, those are split. Those somehow affect each other. So if we have a plus big C and a plus little c, that means that each of them are showing a heterozygous expression of that antigen, and therefore that antigen expression may be weakened. Now, in this case, in cell one here, we have uh, big C has a plus and little c has a zero. So we say that big C is homozygous. It's all by itself, and therefore it is probably expressing itself as strongly as it can. So we have to take this into consideration when we're crossing out our antigens. So with D, uh, since it's by itself, I know that that's a strong reaction. I'm going to do a double cross or an X. And that's going to tell me that basically there's no way that our antibody that's showing up positive over here, that that can be big D because we have it's negative here and it's positive here, and it's a strong expression, so we're just going to cross it off. Now, when it comes to other anti uh, antigens, uh, like I said, big C, little c, big E, little e, uh, we are also going to take uh, uh, um, why am I gapping out? <laughs> Dosage into consideration. Sometimes this happens when you're on camera. Um, and actually, we're going to treat you know, this is, once again, this is an, the, uh, this, there are differing, uh, differing opinions on this. Uh, some uh, laboratorians believe that only certain antigens need to have dosage taken into consideration, whereas other laboratorians think you have to take dosage into considerations for all antigens. So we're going to follow that second approach just to be on the, a little bit more on the cautious side. All right. So, so big C, homozygous. So since it's all by itself and this cell is, is negative, we're going to completely cross that off. Okay, big E, little e, okay, I can't really do anything here. I can't double cross them off, but I am going to single cross them off like this, okay, because there is some reaction and because it's heterozygous, yeah, it's, it's maybe weakened, but it is a reaction of some kind or some, a positive uh, positivity in some way. So I'm going to give it kind of like a half reaction. Okay, V, C, W, nothing. Okay, we have little k, and that's, that's by, uh, we have big K and little k, and that's homozygous. So let's go ahead and let's cross that off. Okay, K, P, K, P, B is all by itself. Let's do that. J, S, B is by itself. It's homozygous. Duffy, B is by itself. Let's cross. Kid, B, Lewis B, P1 is by itself, let's double cross it, N by itself, let's double cross it off, okay, S and, big S and little s, so they're both heterozygous, so let's just give them a one slash like that, okay, Lewis B, or I'm sorry, Lutheran B, uh, let's go ahead and give that a double, and then XGA is nothing, all right, then we're just going to go ahead and go through all of these, and start cro keep continuing to cross them off. Okay, so here we go over to little c. Okay, it's homozygous because it's by itself. Big C is not present, so we can completely cross that off. Okay, here, big E, homozygous. Let's completely give that an X and cross it off. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, Duffy A is all by itself, homozygous. Let's cross it off. Kid A, homozygous. Okay. 
All right, big M is heterozygous there, so we'll just give it one slash. Okay. All right, and XGA is by itself, so I'm going to go ahead and double cross that off. Okay. All right, now little e is homozygous here, so we're going to completely cross that off. V, homozygous. Let's completely give it an X. Okay. Okay, here big M is homozygous, so I'm going to completely cross that off. Okay, Lewis A, homozygous. Let's get rid of it. Okay, big S, homozygous. Let's give it a cross, double X there, or an X, double slash. Okay, seven is positive, so we're going to Go by that because we're just working on the negatives right now. Okay, here we have little s. It's homozygous, so good. We can cross that off. All right, here we have Lutheran A, but it's... I'm sorry, did I say little s heterozygous, I meant to say little s homozygous, if I didn't say that. Um, Lutheran A, heterozygous, so let's just give that one slash. Okay, nine. Okay, let's go on to move number 10. Okay, so CW here is by itself, so we're going to say that that's homozygous, and that's negative, so we can cross that off. Okay, 10 is okay, and let's go to our technical cells. Okay, okay. Okay, Lutheran A still hanging out there. Okay, all right, so we've gone through everything, and now what I like to do is I go ahead and take my red pen again and I circle what is left. So we have Cal, KPA, JSA, and Lutheran A. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about these ones that are left over. All right, so KPA, if we haven't noticed already, this is an extremely low incident antigen. As a matter of fact, it's completely zero. There are no, no positive uh, cells here in this panel. So I'm going to just go ahead and cross that guy off. All right, now JSA is the same. It's a low incident antigen, but it does have one positive cell here. Now, okay. So this is where we have to make a decision, right? So over here, we have no reaction. We have a one, you know, a, a heterozygous expression. All right. Could it be positive? And it just, I mean, could it be so weak that it's just not showing up here? I suppose it possibly could, but it's a low incident antigen. And oftentimes, those are viewed as just being able to be crossed out. Now, let's say, for example, we needed to do a cross match on this patient, and we did the cross match, and it came up positive. And, you know, uh, if we have picked a unit of blood for cross match that is negative for the antigen that, you know, if we discovered that one of these other antigens is, is, the, one that is the antibody that the patient has, and we select a unit that is negative for that antigen and the cross match is still coming up positive, then we would maybe take into consideration these low incident antigens. So at this stage, I'm going to cross this out. So if it comes up in the cross match later, if something comes up positive, I'll investigate it then. Okay, so that leaves us with uh, Kel and Lutheran A. So let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, so Lutheran A is positive 
here in cell 8, but there were no reactions. Now, once again, this is a low incident uh, antibody. Luthrin A is IgG and IgM, but it tends to react at room temperature. And I don't see, I mean, there's no reaction whatsoever, and certainly not one at room temperature. So at this point, I'm going to cross that out. Now, something that we could do is we could go ahead and, because there is the attitude that, for example, if you have two heterozygous cells that uh, you could, with confidence, cross this out. But we only have one here. One that's, con you know, it's negative here, it's positive here. We have to make a decision, do we cross it out or, or don't we? Now, if we had another one, let's just say that five was also positive, but it was negative, we would have a little bit, we would be a bit more confident in crossing that out. Um, now, what we can do sometimes is we can go ahead and take a look at the screen because, you know, this is, these are another set of cells, but this doesn't really help us because both of the cells are negative for Lutheran A. So what you could do is you could go to another uh, set of panel, you know, another antibody panel. Now this lot number is 38309. You would need to go to one with a different lot number because if you went to the same lot number, it would just be the same cells. Um, and you can get another Lutheran that's positive and go ahead and run the patient if you want to verify, you know, have a double negative um, uh, or a double heterozygous rule out for that one. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and rule it out. All right, so that leaves us with KEL or big K. Now, one of the other rules that we have to follow, um, it's a pretty uh, solid rule, I would say, that it's the rule of three. So whenever we end up with, with an antibody, we have to make sure that there are three positive cells and three negative cells. So our negatives, we have one, two, three. Okay, our positives, we have one, and two, okay, so we don't have, we can't really quite complete the rule of three. But that's where we go ahead and we rely, we can go back to our screen. So our screen, if we look here, is positive for big K. And it's positive here. So I'm going to consider that the third positive. All right, so I feel pretty confident that the uh, aloe antibody that this patient has uh, is anti big K. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to write that just like that. And make sure you write a big K, right? Because there is a difference between big K and little K uh, in the English alphabet. Okay, uh, that wraps up uh, patient A.